All right, today's language lesson is about using commas with regard to dialogue and quotations. This is a pretty short video, but I wanted to show you some examples of how you need to punctuate dialogue. So what I provided here is an example of actual dialogue that I just randomly wrote in which two characters, a Mr. Bailey and Mr. Malone, are talking. Now, when you're punctuating dialogue, one of the first rules is like when you come to the end of a, a sentence inside of a quotation mark and you have like the, the question mark, the interrogative thing, you actually, that counts as the punctuation, but make sure that it's tucked inside of the quotation mark. Now, this is where things get a little bit complicated because we're going to have to use a comma in this next example here. So, like, uh, I intended to do so is what the character is actually saying. Now, what would have occurred if this had stood by itself would have been a period here. This is an independent clause that the, that the character is saying. However, in this case, because we're ending the sentence with said Mr. Malone, in this case, we actually need to use a comma. So this is when you use a comma when you're creating dialogue between characters. The di basically, at this point, the comma replaces the period because your true period in this sentence is at the end there. So then that brings us to the second part of this then is Mr. Bailey said, and notice when we lead into that, we have to have a comma after the word said, and then we have the quotation mark. Mr. Bailey said that would probably be a good idea to see what is going on. Now, there would have been a period here, but we've continued the sentence, and then he laughed. So at this point, once again, the comma replaces the period. So the general rule is that in the dialogue, if there's more sentence coming after the end of the quotation mark, like in this here, you replace any sort of periods with commas. Um, it's unbelievable what we have to do when we are teaching, and now this is correct because we don't have any more sentence coming. We don't have, like, said Mr. Bailey or anything like that. So in this case, we keep the period intact as we finish the independent clause by the, by the character. So then, obviously, we respond with, you, sir, are telling the truth, and that should have been a period, but it isn't because we still have Mr. Malone said. And then when we lead into quotes inside of dialogue, we lead into it with a comma. And there you go, we have a lot to teach this year. So that is an example of dialogue between characters. So that's how commas work in that case. Now, it helps to know this stuff. Uh, I have not generally seen it tested on iLearn, but I've seen it tested on the SAT. But you do need to kind of understand these concepts that basically inside of dialogue, commas replace periods when you're continuing the sentence. And I'm highlighting the section I'm referring to there. That brings me to the second part of today's lesson, which is punctuating quotations from authors and articles. So we have a couple of things that are going on here. Um, so on the one hand, it says example or sorry, example one, for example. So there's our transitional phrase. We keep that. The author explains, comma. And in this case, we led into a direct quote from what was in the article. Um, so leading into things when they say like explains or says or states or any of those type of verbs that mean to talk, um, leading into, into the quote like that, you have to have a pause and that's why you see a comma in these examples. However, there is an exception, and I'm actually going to try to draw the text box to, to make this happen. So example three, this is an example of not this rule. Um, so I'm going to try to make up a sentence off the top of my head. Uh, according to the most recent data, um, Portage eighth graders are showing signs of, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to move that, of great improvement in their reading scores. And so when I do this, um, in this case, there's no comma that's needed there, and it's not needed because this follows the flow of the sentence. So sometimes when you use a quotation, if the quotation is used and it just simply flows from the beginning of the sentence of what you're saying into what the actual dialogue says, if there's a natural flow here, 
Um, in this case, you do not pause or use the comma. But this is just two specific rules with regard to comma usage. The first one was with dialogue, um, and then the second one was leading into quotation marks. But like I said, leading into quotes, if there's a natural flow in the words you're using at the beginning of the sentence and into the uh, quote itself, then you don't have to pause there. You don't have to put the comma. So that is a specific rule. Um, it's just something stylistically as you start to do more research-based writing or you're quoting things from the articles that we're reading that it's just a good stylistic thing to do. Thank you.